let's put it to the test. That's why I like the word metaphysics, because it, it's, the, it's the term of a scientist. I'm going to approach this as a science. And so I'm going to conduct my own research to find out my own findings to determine whether this is true or not. Greetings, greetings. Welcome back to another episode of The Weekly Awakening. My name is Taraku Day, the metaphysical master, here with another episode from Awaken Within. And today we're going to talk about uh, my story and kind of how I got started in metaphysics and got started on this journey. You know, I mean, I, when I was a kid, my dad used to teach me how to meditate. I used to lucid dream and, and, and create my own dreams each night as a child. But, um, you know, as I got older, a lot of that kind of faded away. And then um, and then I stumbled back upon the ancient mysteries uh, of life. And um, that's kind of what this is about, my story, you know, the, the mystery that I stumbled upon. Because, uh, you know, the etymology of the word mystery is all about secret. And, you know, your own story is your own secret until you express it to someone. As soon as you say a secret to someone else, it's no longer a secret because someone else has been told. So one other person knows about it. It's no longer a mystery. It's no longer your story. It's it's at the world story or whoever you shared it with in their world. And so that's what I'm doing with this. I'm, I'm releasing my story onto you all and releasing onto you the mystery that I discovered through my own journey within myself. And so this uh, is actually a two video series. There's going to be two parts. The second part is going to be describing the uh, hand chakra technique that I used and facilitated early on in my journey that I still use to this day. Um, actually, just earlier today, I used it. <laughs> I've been wanting to do this video uh, for a long time and, and just doing it today. I was like, all right, now, now's the time. <laughs> and so when you come across that, just realize there's another a video should be linked um, at the top or in the description. If it's not, then that just means that you have stumbled upon the very beginning of this video and just look for it in like two days. So the real journey for me started around the age of like 24, 25. Um, no, 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 it was 26. I was, I was, no, yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm 25 or I'm, <laughs> I'm 35 now. So that means I was 25 at the time. And I was going to school and working two jobs. And um, I went back to school at University of Cincinnati. And <laughs> like almost all the time, if I wasn't in school or um, at a job, I was usually like hanging out with my friends or playing basketball. And that's it. And um, one day I woke up and I realized like I had been going so fast and so hard that I didn't even realize until the day of like, oh, shoot, I don't have to work today at either job. and I don't have to go to school today. I don't have no classes. And that was like the first time that happened in like four months. And um, and so I when I woke up, I was like, you know what, I'm man, I'm going to I'm going to go do this. I'm going to play ball. I'm going to run these couple errands. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go buy this. And I had all these plans starting out the day. And then next thing I know, I'm looking out the window and the sun's already gone down. And um, and the whole day's gone by and I haven't done anything. I only got off the couch to get something to eat and go take a shit. And that's it. And uh, I was realizing that I didn't really have any energy. And so I, I called up my dad because he had ta taught me uh, Qigong when I was a younger child as well. Um, and so I called up my dad and I asked him, I said, you know, hey, Pops, I, I want to learn more about energy. Um, you know, where, where would I go to find out more about energy? And he, uh, he told me, you know, look, go do some research on Qigong and, and see what you find out and then come back to me. And so, you know, a quick Google shirt search, and this is back, I mean, you know, it wasn't even, I don't even think, I think maybe iPad had just come out, but, um, you know, phones, like you had the screens and everything, but they, they weren't like today. And so uh, I was on my desktop computer, Googling up Qigong and looking up all these videos and stuff. And then about like four hours later, because I was just, you know, in a wormhole of information. And like four hours later, I was stumbling across uh, chakras and things like that. And it was just fascinating to me. And so I was just kind of spent the next couple of days and weeks kind of just contemplating on that. And then I started like doing some meditations and things like just my meditation was really just I would just sit down, put my attention on my root chakra. And then once I started feeling something, then I would move my attention up to the next chakra. Once I started feeling something, then I moved my attention up to the next chakra. And, and I could feel this energy like bubbling up. And later found out, you know, this, I was like moving my Kundalini energy. But anyways... Not to digress too much, um, 
about about maybe like a month later, I, I did a couple breathe, you know, learned a couple breathing exercises and things. and just was wanting to understand energy and how I could have more energy. Because when I was a kid, all my life, I had tons of energy. And all of a sudden, I just didn't have any energy. And um, somehow, I just met this girl who um, I, won't, I only talked to her two times. And the second time, she brought me this book and um, and some crystals. And like I was coming out of heavy, like, Christian programming and things. So like the crystals, I was like, oh man, this book seems nice because it was a book about chakras and hand chakras and healing yourself with your hand chakras. I was like, I'm gonna like this book, but these little devil rocks, like I'm gonna I'm gonna put these in the back of my closet. But you know, oh thank you. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how I approached it. And uh and they did sit back there for like another two or three months. <laughs> but um the book though was very intriguing to me because up at that point that had been like two months from like the time where I just didn't have any energy and just wanted to just start learning this stuff again but it had been two years almost to the day since um like I I, I was always skinny my whole life like real skinny like skin and bones like you like I've always been able to see my heartbeat uh skinny like up until I was like 23 and um uh, no, yeah, like 22, 22 when I started playing semi-pro football. And when I started playing semi-pro football, my cousin owned a team, um, you know, a good friend of the family since I was a kid. He owned a, the semi-pro team and asked me to play because uh, I was really fast. And so I got home that night and I looked at myself because I, I told him, yeah, I looked at myself in the mirror and I realized like, man, I'm skinny. These is grown men out here, like former D1 players, you know, cats who if it wasn't for one in key injury be in the NFL right now. And I was like, man, I'll get folded in half running across the middle on these guys. <laughs> this ain't high school, you know. So um, so I just doubled my food intake and started working out all day, every day. Calisthenics all day, every day. And doubled my food intake. I put on 30 pounds in 30 days. Like, uh, I mean, one of my friends, uh, B, he still to this day, like, thinks that I took, he doesn't believe that I didn't take steroids <laughs> over that time. Because, I mean, he saw me. And then three weeks later, boom, I'm shredded. And he's, he, you know, he's just like, nah, you take a steroids. And it's like, nah, I'm just all day, every day. I'd be somewhere, 25 push-ups, you know, 25 push-ups, 15 dips. You know, be with my friends. Hey, who's doing 25 push-ups with me? You know, one or two do 25. And then 30 minutes later, hey, who's doing 25 push-ups with me? To where the whole group done did like maybe 50 push-ups each, but I did 200 by the time we're leaving. You know, and I just did all this work and put on all this weight. Well, one day, I'm sitting there smoking and, um, and, all of a sudden, my heart feels like it just completely, like, like you got a sponge, a big sponge, and just completely wring it out. That's what it felt like. It felt like it just like wrung out all the blood out of my heart. And, and I'm just sitting there like thinking I'm about to die. And I'm like, man, I'm over at my friend's house. And I'm about to die on his fucking couch. Fuck. And, uh, and then all of a sudden, boom, 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 just boom, exploded. And with, with like pumping again. And uh, and that happened one time. And then it was like two or three months later, it happened again. And then it was never that severe any other time after that. But um, it was it, it was still like an onset of that. And it, it repeated like faster and faster. It was like exponentially getting shorter and shorter time to where... Two years later, you know, after, you know, two months into doing all this, it was at least once a day, at least once a day, I'd be sitting somewhere. And then all of a sudden, you know, we sitting there hanging out and stuff and I just get real quiet because I'm thinking I might be, this might be the moment I'm about to die. And like, it would be nights where I would be going to sleep and just wondering like, man, if I died tonight, like, I wonder how long it'll be till somebody finds me, you know, which, which is funny to me now because, you know, I'd, I'd have been dead. So. Why, why would it have mattered? But at the time, I was petrified, you know? Every single night, I felt like I, I mean, I could go at any minute, any second. And, and it was very real. And so that had been going on for two years. Well, a year after that began, and a year prior to um, me getting that book, was a whole year of this growth growing on the back of my head, like this, you know, tumor or something, something big it was getting bigger and bigger it was like to the size of a dime um by the time it was like right at the back of my at the back of my head 
And um, and like the base of like where my spine connects with my skull, that area, like right off the brain. And um, and that scared me too. And I that one I really didn't want to know because I was like, if I find out I'm gonna die in three months, I don't want to know. <laughs> and I'd already been spending a year of just thinking I'm gonna die at any second, anyways. And so it wasn't really that big a deal to me, but it really was a big deal to me. And um, so both of those things have been going on, one for two years and one for a year. Almost every single day it, it was in the back of my attention or in the front of my attention. And so I got this book and this book had three sections. I still don't know the name of this book. So I let my cousin borrow it and he can't find it. And I've been looking for this book ever since like, it's like eight, nine, 10 years now, nine years, eight or nine years now, I've been, I've been trying to find out the name of this book. But it had three parts. The first part was talking about what Jesus was doing in between the times when, in the Bible, when he was a child and went off to Egypt and, you know, was then grown and collecting disciples. And it was just talking about what he was doing and how he was in the ancient mystery schools in Egypt, learning, learning different healing techniques. He would open up his hand chakras, knew all about the chakras and other mysteries and things. Um, and that's how he would heal the people was through the uh, divine energy within his hand chakras. And then the second part of the book was all about hand chakras and uh, how to use those to facilitate healing within yourself and other people. And then the third part of the book was about astral projection. And so the astral projection part, I was like, you know, that's like the crystal rocks. Like, yeah, I'm cool on that, but you ain't about to have me doing this stuff, having demons jump in me when I jump out <laughs> kind of thing. That's, that's just where I was at at the time. You know, I was at the very, very first stages of my journey. And so, and so I was like, man, I... I Let's check it out. If this book says it's legit, let's find out because I got some serious fucking health issues. So let's really find out if what this book is talking about is true. And so from the very beginning, you know, anyone who, any of you who, who know me, who have followed me for a while or have learned anything from me or had any kind of conversations from me where I'm talking about any type of knowledge, you'll know that one of the very first things I say and tell you, um, you know, even my, one of my friends came over and bought my book and um, he said, you know, one of the things I love about this book is in the very first sentence. I said this, and, and I pretty much said, you know, everything that you read in this book, but normally I just tell people, anything that you hear from me in my videos, I'll say, anything you hear in this video, don't believe a word of it. Don't believe it. I don't want you to believe me. I don't want you to just take, just because it resonates as true within you, just take that as, as truth. No, that's not truth. You know, it may resonate, and intuitively you might know that it's truth, but you don't truly know you're stuck on belief. And so from a very early point, I didn't read that book and just, Oh, yeah, that sounds like it's true. It, I believe that and just go with that. I was like, nah, let's put it to the test. That's why I like the word metaphysics, because it, it's, the, it's the term of a scientist. I'm going to approach this as a science. And so I'm going to conduct my own research to find out my own findings to determine whether this is true or not. Because the difference between believing something and knowing something is experience, having an experience. You know, like um, if I told you that it was raining outside... And my neighbor called you up and they told you that it's not raining, it's sunny outside. And uh, you would just have to decide who to believe. But if you were standing out on my porch with me and you could see that it was raining, then you would know what was true because you're experiencing it. You know, my neighbor, could, no matter what my neighbor could say, they couldn't, they couldn't sway you or at all. They couldn't, they couldn't influence you at all because you were standing solid within your knowledge because you had, you had your own experience for yourself. And so that's what I always suggest to anyone, you know, experience it for yourself. You know, with that next chakra video, hand chakra video, I'm going to say it in there. You know, don't believe anything you see in this video. Find out for yourself whether it's true or not. And so, and that's the kind of approach that I have always taken with metaphysics is just finding out for myself whether this is true or not. So did the technique with, uh, within it and then within, like this has been going on for two years and a year. Like, like the hard thing was every single day. There was a moment, sometimes it was real intense, sometimes it was just subtle. Like it had just started, but, but then subsided. Like and then sometimes it was like, woo, 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 like pushing up to the point of like my heart just stopping or something or exploding. I don't know what I was about to do. But um, within 30 days of doing this technique, within 30 days, I have yet to have a symptom from either of those since. The growth was completely gone within 30 days. And it, and it had been getting bigger and bigger every single day. Every day, it was bigger than the day before since the day I noticed it for a whole year. And, and, it, and it was completely gone. The heart issue, I've never had that experience happen ever since. And that was, what, like eight years ago? 
uh, what's this, 20, 2021? So yeah, nine, nine years ago. Um, yeah, spring of spring of uh, 2012. And so then for me, it was it was game on. I was like, you know, this shit is legit. Like I for real was thinking I was about to die. And from that moment on, I spent every waking moment studying or meditating or breathing or spending time in nature or something, you know, to where like one day I just got done meditating. But I was and at the time I was still smoking <laughs> heavy at the time. But but I did stop that a, a lot. I cut it back a lot. And then within a few months of that spring, I just cut it out completely. But anyways, one day I'm sitting there about to roll up and I realized I don't got no Rellos. So I was going to run to the store real quick and grab a cigarello. It was right around the corner. So I'm walking down the street. I just got done meditating because I because I, I waited to smoke until the end of the day. I didn't want none of my practices or anything or exercises that I was doing, meditations or energy work with my chakras. I didn't want the weed to influence any of that. So after I got done with that, I, w- I went to the store and I cut, turned the corner and the sun was just like right there. And I was just stuck looking right at it. And I mean... I, if I were to guess, I would, in hindsight and understanding what I understand about sun gazing now and all of my experiences with it and, and sharing it with other people, I would guess I was probably only looking like 20, maybe 30 seconds, but it felt like five, 10 minutes. I was just sitting there with the sun. It was this whole transformational experience that I was having and the imagery within it was also symbolic of transformation. It was a very powerful personal experience um, to where I didn't even... I forgot all about what I was doing. I just turned around and ran home because I wanted to find out, is this some sort of thing that people do? Like, or is this just something that I just stumbled upon? So I just looked up, you know, looking into the sun and all this stuff. And I found out there is, it's an ancient, ancient technique, yogic practice of sun gazing and everything. I got some videos on sun gazing. Check those out. I'll probably link those in here too. Um, and the benefits of that, how to do it, how to approach it safely and get the, get the maximum effect uh, benefits from it. And, uh, and just things like that just started happening because I was dedicating 100% of my time. Like I'd be at work, I'd take a book with me and any, even if it was only a five minute break, boom, for that five minutes, I'm reading this book. If it was kind of slow and I had three minutes, I'm cracking open this book and reading two paragraphs. Like it doesn't matter while I'm at work, I'm practicing different little breathing techniques or, um, different like mantra techniques or something like 100% of my time was fully dedicated to this. And then I, you know, after a while, I realized it was funny to me because I was like, wow, my soul would like knew that my life choices was on a path. Like, this is what I was meant to do, what I'm on right now, teaching and sharing of my own experience and, and helping others as they begin to wake up and, and move forward, helping to guide them towards away from a lot of all this bullshit where, you know, people are having, you know, people are putting the attention outside of themselves more helping steer people back to it within themselves. And I knew that this was what I was wanting to do. And I was realizing that before, like all, before all those health issues and everything, my life was just, I was just taking all these choices that was moving me in the wrong direction. And I feel like my soul was just kind of like, you know what, let's, if, if you don't get it together right now, we just going to cut it off, stop and, and start a new life again and start over try again because <laughs> like this is not going to work you're just going to end up building up more karma for yourself and making it even harder in the future but once i do that that those health issues got me back on the path that i needed to be on and then they went away i'm fine gone moving forward but anyways i just wanted to share that just to kind of share with you how i got to where i'm at how i got to be someone who is so dedicated towards this knowledge and understanding of myself and um, this practice that I have uh, put into place, you know, in this lifestyle that I have chosen for myself. And this is what got me started. And I just want to share this with you because it might resonate with some of you all. Um, you know, you maybe learn something from my story. And I just wanted to bring this, my own personal mystery, to all of you to kind of un- unveil and reveal some of that mystery and what was hidden and uh, make it open and exposed so that others can learn from it. So check out the other video. I'll teach you the hand chakra technique that I uh, used to heal myself and still use to this day. Like if I get a cold, like if I wake up, like you know how you wake up and you just got that itch in your throat to where you know by the end of the day, you're going to have a sore throat. 
like a full on coughing all day. Like anytime I wake up with any of those, I just open up my hand chakras, do another technique like this. And I'll explain it in there in the video. And then within, within five minutes, completely fine. Cold don't come, don't come, it's gone. The feeling's gone, the cold's gone. It's, it's fascinating every time, even though, even though I know it works and I do it, it's just fascinating every single time. But uh, go check that out, check out uh, that other video. And uh, as always, I leave you in peace.